Thank you for stopping by. I just have something to say. When I first saw this video, my first instinctual reaction was, here we go again, police using excessive force. But the media did a poor job of framing this incident. It was reported as a controversial shooting, and it wasn't. It's a controversial arrest. It's understandable why the police reacted the way they did. Please give a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's take a look at this. Getting a new look at a controversial arrest that has two officers on leave and their actions under investigation. Video just released by the Phoenix Police Department shows a man shooting towards officers last month at a gas station. But those officers were later placed on administrative leave after cell phone video surfaced showing them kicking and hitting the suspect as they arrested him. Team 12's Adriana Loya is here now with more on what this new video shows. And we do want to warn you, some of what you'll see is graphic. This is the encounter that has two Phoenix police officers on administrative leave. Video captured by a witness shows them head stomping and hitting 38-year-old Harry Denman with their guns while he's on the ground. One of the kicks landing after he was handcuffed. Okay, so the problem that I have with this video is the way that the media portrays it is, here's a guy just getting a Slurpee, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, these cops just pile drive them and just start beating them with their guns. Context matters, and framing the police into looking like they're a bunch of thugs is not productive for anybody. Again, this whole channel is about police accountability, but we got to be fair to get to the truth. But what this did not show was why officers were arresting him. Phoenix police releasing video Thursday on what they say happened minutes before. The officers were leaving the gas station near 59th Avenue and Buckeye Road. When outside, Denman approaches them. Police say the suspect wanted to talk with them, but they were needed at another call. As the patrol car backs from the parking spot, Denman is seen pulling out a handgun and shooting at the ground. A flash can be seen here. Denman then is seen pointing the handgun at the officers and fires another round. One bullet hits the cruiser's spotlight and goes to the driver's side. So it looks like this is another video where I'm giving criminals career advice. That bullet probably came within inches of striking that officer in the head. Let me tell you. If you want to avoid getting your ass beat, shot, or possibly killed by the police, don't shoot at them. While some people may think that the job of a police officer may be easy and overblown of the risk, they are getting attacked out there. And this kind of nonsense, you're going to get a response. I'm sorry. These men are human beings. Video shows Denman run into the store behind the counter. <laughs> The officers rush in with their guns drawn. Surveillance video shows Denman with his hands up, getting on his knees, complying to commands. Get on the Don't move. As they handcuff Denman, both officers hit him with their guns once in the head. Get the A second body camera captures Denman talking to officers. I don't have no problem with you guys. What the f you, dude? Don't shoot at us. Sorry, I was trying to shoot over you. No, what the f is that, dude? Again. I was just trying to shoot over you. Just don't shoot. It's ridiculous. Now, I would say that this may be considered excessive force if this was 30 minutes later, an hour later, a day later, when the adrenaline has time to, to level off. You've had time to get over the shock of somebody just almost shooting you in the head. Again, context matters. Imagine if somebody puts a round through your car and misses your head by, by inches. And to act like this is some kind of academic exercise, these guys are human and this is not a perfect world. And there's no way we're going to keep and retain good cops if we're expecting them to be perfect. It's just not going to happen. Did they shoot them? No. Did they break anything? Did they, does it, it to me, it doesn't appear like it was any serious injuries. And that's just from my background as a paramedic firefighter and look at the extent of what they did. It didn't look too serious. I could be wrong. But it didn't look too serious. It maybe resulted in a few bruises and maybe even a laceration. But at the end of the day, it, considering what he had done and the fact that he wasn't shot or wasn't severely injured because of his actions, speak a lot to these police officers, especially under the circumstances. In the arresting report, officers said they had to use physical force in response to his resistance and the possibility that he was still armed, booking him on several charges. But a grand jury indicting him only on aggravated assault charges and for discharging a firearm. Now, this is one of those things that just gets under my skin as a gun owner and as a victim rights advocate. You pull a gun, you point it at another individual, and you pull that trigger, that's attempted murder. Aggravated assault is when I pull a gun in most states, 
when I pull a gun and point it at you in an intimidating manner, you see it in the movies all the time. Nothing ever happens. But in the real world, you pull a gun on somebody, you point it at them and they're scared uh, in fear of their lives. You just committed aggravated assault. You pull that trigger, in my opinion, should have been attempted murder on a police officer. And this is one reason why we're losing our police officers. They're putting their lives at risk. Someone has the balls to, to take a shot at you, to try to kill you. And all they get is a slap on the wrist. By the time this is all said and done, you watch this guy be walking and these cops' careers are ruined. Following the incident, Interim Police Chief Michael Sullivan said, what is depicted in the video is not how we train and is not aligned with the core values of the Phoenix Police Department. Now the department is in the middle of conducting an internal and criminal investigation into the officer's actions. One of them has been with Phoenix Police for six years, the other less than one. Now here we go with the internal affairs doing their internal and criminal investigation on these officers that honestly, I don't know from a human being standpoint how they could have done better in this situation, considering that it happened in such a brief amount of time and the adrenaline was running and going. Again, they didn't shoot him. It didn't look like he was seriously injured. They didn't tune him up when they got him into the car. They didn't tune, tune him up getting him to jail, at least as far as I know. And if this is the worst that they did under that circumstance, I mean, the only thing I could say is, okay, well, do your investigation. And possibly what I would say as, a, as just a, as a civilian, just a layman who's, again, wanting to see better policing is, Put it through some counseling. Make sure that they're okay. Um, supervise them. Criminal charges? Man, what a stretch. These cops could probably end up doing more time and having their careers more negatively impacted than the guy who actually committed this crime. We have a real problem, and we need to take care of these officers, and, the, and we do need to hold the ones that are the bad apples accountable too. So please don't go off the reservation and think that I've lost my mind. But we do need to have balance in the equation to protect the good cops from bad actors, and we also need to protect the civilians from, from bad policing. It's a balance, and it's an equation that we all need to collectively work together to solve. Thank you for visiting. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and please share this video. Thank you for stopping by.